Time once again for a practice watch along on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Travis Ryer, senior analyst for BOL, back with you as the Alabama Crimson Tide prepares for a showdown. It will host the 11th ranked Longhorns at the University of Texas Saturday night at Bryant Denny Stadium. A classic, not just the eyes of Texas that will be on this one, the eyes of the entire college football world going to be checking in on the Crimson Tide and the Horn. So what we're going to do on the watch along on this Tuesday evening is meld the practice footage provided to the media by the University of Alabama for both Monday and Tuesday's practices. So we'll start with the workout from yesterday. We'll get into the footage we were provided for Tuesday kind of just condense them, bring them together. And what we'll start with is an area of this Alabama football team went into the week, at least, with question marks about the safety position primarily and how that impacts some of the sub-package roles as well and the nickel and dime that we'll work through here as we take a look at the defensive backs. Now, this initial footage is from Monday's practice, and there you see Kool-Aid McKinstry leading those guys through individual drill work. And really good to see Kool-Aid out there on Monday because, as we know, the guy took a big-time shot on a punt return there in the second half of Alabama's win over MTSU. So good to see Kool-Aid out there leading the way. There's Terry and Arnold. There is Caleb Downs, big performance in his debut for the true freshman safety. There's Christian Story as well, working through drills. Jake Pope. Second-year player, guy who saw some action at safety to go along with another one of these guys, 27 right there, Tony Mitchell. We saw Pope and Mitchell out there late against MTSU. And between them, a guy that, depending on the statuses of Jalen Key and or Malachi Moore this week, uh, could play a huge role, a bigger role. He played a role against MTSU, Trey Amos did. He was that corner that came on in the dime allowed Terry and Arnold to move inside to the star position. And then also, as a domino effect of all that, Malachi Moore was able to go from star in the nickel to money in the dime. So again, the availability of a couple of these safeties, key and more, uh, something that we're certainly going to continue to keep an eye on. And it's typically the case, Wednesday is usually a big day. You, you usually have to be able to go in some form or fashion for that Wednesday practice to be a part of things. Uh, at least from a significant standpoint for Saturday. So you'll hear from Nick Saban uh, Wednesday evening after uh, tomorrow's practice. Maybe he will comment on that. And then, of course, you'll also hear from him on his coach's show Thursday night where he has a tendency from time to time, Nick does, to be a little more forthcoming on that coach's call-in show uh, than maybe he is in front of the assembled media. So there goes Tony Mitchell. There's Antonio Kite, another guy who saw some action late in the win over MTSU. And of course, Des Ricks, a promising freshman corner as well. Here comes Kool-Aid working back towards the camera with uh, Terry and Arnold, Caleb Downs, Christian Story, Pope, Mitchell. Uh, and it's interesting. It's a big week, regardless of the availability of Moore uh, and Key. Uh, these guys are going to have to play at a high level. Even if this secondary has those guys, it's going to have to play at a high level because the challenge goes up significantly. Not only a quarterback in Quinn Ewers, who is very capable now, he's had some struggles where the deep passing game is concerned. I know if you're an Alabama fan, it's hard to fathom that given the way he played in the quarter of action that he was on the field in the game against the Crimson Tide in Austin last season. But I saw a stat from Texas's win over Rice last Saturday in the Longhorn season opener. Quinn Ewers on passes of 20 yards or more in that game, 0 for 7. But again, that's not going to discourage Sark and those wide receivers and Ewers from taking shots at the secondary. I think that'll continue to be the case, especially when you get Xavier Worthy out there. You got Jordan Whittington working inside. And then you've got Adani Mitchell that has joined that mix. And of course, Alabama fans would rather forget Mitchell altogether after the catch he made in Indianapolis as a then Georgia Bulldog to give the dogs the lead over Alabama in that 2022 College Football National Championship, one that it would not relinquish. So the challenge is real. And that's before you talk about Jatavian Sanders, the mammoth the athletic tight end for the Longhorns that you got to think between the star position, a safety position, maybe a linebacker is asked from time to time. 
uh, could find themselves matched up with Sanders as well. So we worked through it with the defensive backs. T-Rob coaching those guys up. This again on Monday. Uh, and then we get a shot there at Kevin Steele. Kevin Steele with a uh, very solid opening performance uh, in his latest stint with the Crimson Tide in that win over MTSU. Yes, Alabama was far superior to the Blue Raiders in terms of talent, but you had to like the way in which the defense looked prepared, the crispness in how it worked, some of its pressures, both simulated and real. Uh, just good stuff from Alabama, a good starting point. Now, again, kind of like how we talked about it with the defensive backs uh, and this team in general, the stakes go up considerably this week with UT. So now we get into some linebackers here and working some leverage. And so again, early drills. There you see Jihad Campbell on Monday. That was a good sight, wasn't it? And that's Kevin Steele. You think Kevin Steele over there is checking out Jihad Campbell in this drill, seeing where he's at? I'd love to get Jihad Campbell back in the mix. Although Kendrick Blackshire did some really good things. Uh, Tresman Marshall got to start opposite Deontay Lawson. And speaking of Deontay Lawson, there he is working with Sean Murphy through some drills on Monday. Uh, here comes Jihad Campbell again, working with Justin Jefferson. Then we quickly shift into the wide receivers. Speaking of Texans, what about Jalen Hale? Game against his home state school coming up on Saturday evening. And I think maybe it was a little bit of a surprise to see Jalen Hale in the game as early as he was against Middle Tennessee. But when you think about it, with Ja'Cory Brooks suspended or out, for the first half against MTSU, maybe it shouldn't have been because as we've talked about many times before, and he showed you in the spring, this is a guy that he's not that far away from being a legitimate high end of the ro rotation option in the not too distant future. So working through drills there, Hale. Uh, also Kobe Prentice. Kobe Prentice against Texas last year uh, had four catches against Longhorns. Wasn't bad for Kobe Prentice, although – I would say in general for those young receivers last year and even a newcomer to the mix like Jermaine Burton, nervy, I would say. Uh, it wasn't the best of days for Alabama's wide receivers. It wasn't the best of days for Bryce Young either, but I think some of that certainly had to do with the guys he was trying to throw the football to. There's Isaiah Bond. You talk about a confidence going into this one. He should have that after a very nice performance against MTSU. Chaz Preston, Cole Adams working through the drills here. And there is Jalen Hale. I've talked about it before. For a guy that's listed at like 6'1", 6'2", he plays like he's 6'3", or so. Preston working there as well. And then we get into the defensive lineman here. There's Jamarian Latham. Here comes Justin Aboigby. And I get the sense this week both of the lines are looking at the opposing offensive line and thinking, you know what? I think we can do okay against these guys. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I think that Texas on its defensive line in terms of size and girth can match up with Alabama. Texas uh, has an interior defensive lineman in sweat who goes like 364. So you want to talk about a battle of the masses on Saturday night in the trenches, it, it's going to be one of those, I think, between these two teams. And there you see a Boigby uh, working through the drill. Here's Tim Keenan getting the air, big man, working on uh, explosiveness right here from the ground up. And the stance is a big part of this. It's something that if you go out to a practice and you listen to Freddie Roach, they'll reinforce that over and over again. You would think at this stage of football, it, it wouldn't be something that position coaches would harp on, but these are individual drills. They are all about fundamentals. That's when you need to get these things right as you move through practice. There's Anquin Barnes, Hunter Osborne, and I stop it here at about 132 in, and you know, I look at some of these young defensive linemen. You're already seeing, I think, some of the physical changes that are taking place. You look over there to the left, and there's James Smith. You look there at 90, Jordan Renaud. Yeah, he's already starting to take on that look. I would say. And then, of course, right here in your living room, there's Hunter Osborne, uh, a guy that is showing signs of adding significant bulk and strength. So those guys work through those drills. And then we get into the offensive lineman here. Here's J.C. Latham working on what looks to be some combo stuff with Darian Dahlcourt. Darian Dahlcourt on the right side here 
with J.C. Latham, as was the case against MTSU on Saturday night. They kind of worked these simulated double teams. The duo run play that I've written about at BamaOnline.com and talked about probably on some of these videos, a big part of the run game that Tommy Reese likes to employ. He likes that initial double team, uh, and then you got a, a lineman coming off, and then, as you see there, I think that's James Brockermeyer at the center position working with Terrence Ferguson going to reach the linebacker from there. And so that's something you'll see them practice a good bit. I mean, it's a it's a common feature of a lot of run games and offensive lines. So Terrence Ferguson, I would say, still in that mix, I would think. It's still that competition for that guard spot opposite Tyler Booker. You see him here working with Caden Proctor. So uh, then we get into the linebackers on Tuesday. We are shifting to Tuesday's practice now. And as we got going there, you saw Kendrick Blackshire look like that left hand maybe bandaged it up, bandaged up pretty good uh, as he gets ready. Coming off a really strong performance against MTSU on Saturday night, so good for him. He recorded one of Alabama's two takeaways, and it was literally a takeaway. I mean, Blackshire literally took the football away. The ball never touched the ground. I know he was given a fumble recovery, but it, it could have been like part interception, part fumble recovery because that ball never hit the ground. Then you see some edge defenders right here. Quay Roussal, another one of those talented freshmen working on, taking on sliders, pullers, because Texas will do some of this on Saturday. Their run game, they'll pull a guard. They'll pull a backside tight end, or they'll bring the tight end across in sort of that split zone look. So you got to be ready, as you see Keon Keeley right here, take on that initial guy and shut the door and be ready to play football from there as we move through it. There's Yonze Pierre, another true freshman. Then you get into Chris Braswell coming off a strong performance against MTSU. It starts with edge setting. I know we're going to talk so much, as we often do, about getting after Quinn Ewers and how is Alabama going to go about that. And there's no B. John Robinson. There's no Roshan Johnson this year to concern yourself with. Kind of like Alabama, though, Texas still has – talent in the tank at the running back position. It's guys that we really haven't heard that much about as of yet, but if you follow recruiting, like I know you all do, then you're probably familiar with the name C.J. Baxter, who is a freshman running back for the Texas Longhorns. And they've got guys that have been in the program kind of like Roydell Williams, kind of like Jace for Alabama. Sark's going to have running backs. And Baxter, you know, and you think about Richard Young, kind of from the same area of the state of Florida for the class of 2023. So it will still start with that run game. And then from there, uh, you'll look to get after Quinn Ewers. And Alabama really, against Bijan Robinson and Johnson a year ago, did a pretty good job in Austin, all things considered. Really, that game, where running backs are concerned, came down to one explosive play from Jace McClellan. Alabama ran for 162 yards or 161 yards. And what, 80, 81 of those came on the one big play early in the game by Jason McClellan. It, it was hard yards in Austin. I think it's going to be the same thing. Although I think this, I think where it gets to be more of a challenge for Texas in that regard is that I just don't feel like we've come anywhere close to seeing what Tommy Reese has in his bag for Jalen Milrow as a runner. For Alabama, you're going to have to concern yourself about Quinn Ewers and how Sark moves him, but he's not going to draw up quarterback power, quarterback lead, quarterback counter for Quinn Ewers. Now, the drill we just watched where you're shutting down on that slider or those pullers, off of that you'll see Quinn Ewers, which he did last week, kind of boot action off of it, and he threw a touchdown pass on a screenplay to a back against Rice last Saturday. So you have to concern yourself with those type of things. But just in terms of outright runs, that's where I think the Alabama run game will probably look the most different this weekend in comparison to week one. So there's Keanu Coop, did some good things when he got a chance the other night. And Q Robinson had the sack of MPSU quarterback Nick Vadiato. And now we see some of the bigger guys working some leverage here on Tuesday. There's a Boyd B. There's Eamon Payne. You're going to have some big offensive linemen in this game, man. You're going to have to be able to use leverage, good hand placement, 
Keep your good. feet where they need to be. Stay ah, disciplined. Don't go rogue. Don't jump ball, out of gap. And so now we get into some of the offensive linemen on Tuesday. And here you see Miles McVeigh with Jaden Roberts over there on the right side uh, working a little bit of a double team. Uh, then we get over to the – Left side, there's Elijah Pritchett, Ferguson, there's James Brockermeyer, your second team center there. So this is more of what you'd see from the second group during individual drills. And from a injury perspective, it seems like Alabama came out of the MTSU game in pretty good shape. Darian Dahlcourt is a guy, obviously, that can swing between guard and center. I would think if a third tackle was needed in this game Saturday night, Elijah Pritchett would be the move. So depth will continue to be a point of emphasis on a weekly basis. And those are the competitions that you don't know as much about as either a fan or a person that's covering this football team. But it is very much a continuation from fall camp, end of the season, and these offensive line coaches like Eric Wolford, they're always looking to better themselves as a collective group. And I'm sure that's the point that's being made to guys that aren't in that first five currently. That's going to do it for the latest practice watch along here on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. If you haven't already, we hope that you'll subscribe to the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Simple as a click. We would certainly appreciate it if you do that. We got full coverage for you. Everything Crimson Tide right there at BamaOnline.com, recruiting such a big part of the backdrop for this matchup on Saturday night. So Joseph Hastings and our site publisher, Tim Watts and Andrew Bone, they're going to take great care of you right there with us at BamaOnline.com. You need to hang out with us on the roundtable, our premium message board at BamaOnline.com. That's where you're going to get the news first from us, the roundtable at BamaOnline.com. Travis Ryer, thanking you once again for joining us for the latest practice watch-along. And until next time, so long, everybody.